Good evening, Moon Princess here, and tonight we're going to go over a true crime case. Um, just a trigger warning. True crime cases are often violent. They often involve sexual assault. So if those are things that you find too unpleasant, just don't watch this video. I, if you don't like it, lots of other videos to watch. So with that being said, let's get into the case. So tonight, we're going to talk about the murder of Christian Obumzeli. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, um, but he goes by Toby. So this is the fatal stabbing, which took place April 3rd um, of 2022 in Miami. He was killed by his girlfriend, Courtney Clenny, who was an Insta and OnlyFans model. Um, he is described by friends as being bright, high energy, highly intelligent, uh, fun, that he lit up the room, that kind of person. Someone who makes everyone smile. He was 27 years old, worked with cryptocurrency, and supported his girlfriend, Courtney Clenny, who was 26 at the time. He helped her manage her social media as she supported herself using OnlyFans and Instagram. She had 2 million followers. It is mentioned that Clenny has substance use issues, mainly alcohol, having a DUI conviction and pending DUI charge. Friends of the couple described their relationship as abusive and tumultuous, with Clenny allegedly being the aggressor. Um, the couple had been together two years. A friend of the pair describes Clenny saying that she was always having these manic episodes, dragging him into it, and him trying to be like, calm down, calm down. Yeah, it sounds... ouch. Clenny was arrested for domestic battery in Las Vegas, having thrown a glass at him, at Toby, in their Texas residence. Police had been called multiple times for instances of interpersonal violence. Their move to Miami occurred recently, um, so January of that year. Christian was stabbed in the chest, the murder occurred in the couple's Miami apartment while the two were in the middle of a dispute. Their apartment was located in Edgewater, Florida. Uh, building security footage and neighbor complaints illustrate a plethora of incidents and arguments occurring between the couple. Complaints by, made by other residents two floors above them and management of their residence was on the verge of evicting the couple as a result. This is according to the arrest warrant. A video was released when Clenny was arrested, showing an incident from two months prior to his death. It shows the couple in the elevator with Clenny attacking her partner who was attempting to restrain her, while she continued to hit him and pull on his hair. It is reported that the couple had broken up in March and Christian had vacated the apartment, but came back a week later and moved in again on April 1st, just two days prior to his death. On April 1st, a domestic violence call was made from the residence, and bruises are alleged to have been on her arms and legs, though no one was arrested and authorities shared that she had been intoxicated. On April 3rd, Clenny called the police saying she stabbed her partner. The day of the murder, Abu Mzili was out of the residence arriving home at 4.32 p.m. While Clenny was working on her social media and talking on the phone with her mom, as the incident occurred, Clenny's mom remained on the line, or so it is reported. 13 minutes after entering the apartment at 4.45 p.m., he was stabbed by Clenny, who called 911 at 4.57 p.m. Following the 911 call, he is rushed to Jackson Memorial Hospital's Ryder Trauma Center and succumbs to his injuries. On that call, the victim can be heard in the background repeatedly saying, he is dying and cannot feel his arm. The defendant is also heard saying, I'm so sorry, baby. Um, TMZ actually distributed a photo taken of Clenny in the building hallway wearing a bra soaked in blood while speaking with authorities. 
Following the stabbing, Clenny was involuntarily hospitalized based on the Baker Act, which in Florida says that a person be hospitalized for 72 hours if they threaten to commit suicide. Clenny's mother reportedly texted her, advising that she not speak with de with detectives without her lawyer and to use the term self-defense. Um, mutual friends of the couple. Josh Ramsey describes his response to the news. These are our two friends we've gone on vacation with, we go to dinners with, we go out on the town with them. And it seems like it's straight out of a crime documentary. We would have never guessed it would have escalated to this point. I think I speak for our whole friend group. We are just shocked, very distraught about this. Text messages were acquired. Text from Christian in which his girlfriend is accused of being physically violent toward him. An article alludes to an incident a year prior where Christian said he was stabbed in the leg to the point he could hardly walk on it, then hit in the head the following day. So forcefully, he had a con developed a concussion. In January of 2022, photos were taken to document other wounds inflicted on him by his partner. Cuts to his cheek and chin, ones which he had to have stitches for. There are text messages from the week before he died, which discuss racial slurs and the worsening violence in their relationship. So, text messages. Um, Toby saying, is love going to kill me? He also says, February was the worst month I had so far. I got cheated on. I got called that word again. I got slapped in my stitches that has reopened multiple times and it's not healing fast enough. Uh, text messages from October 2021. They're still living in Texas at the time. An argument occurs over her taking his phone and mention of the stab wound to his leg. Him saying, it hurts so bad he couldn't fucking walk. He also texted her the next morning, I still woke up happy. I still gave you a good day even though my leg was hurting because my girlfriend stabbed me. Did I make you feel like shit for stabbing me? No, just sucked it up and hoped tomorrow will be better. In text messages the following day, he mentions Clenny spitting on him and how she rammed her phone in his face and back of his head. He had begged her to let him in the apartment to lay down, saying, now I have a lump, I'm bleeding, throwing up. I think I got a mild concussion and have anxiety. I slept in the restroom for two hours and I'm just lost beyond words. Her response five minutes later was, I'm sorry for hitting you in the face, in the back of your head, and spitting on you. Is it right? No. You just pissed me the fuck off, but I still love you. Because that's how people love one another. People that love someone treat them, not one another, but that's how, when you love someone, how you treat them, of course. Several months later, at this point, they are in the Juan Paraiso apartment, located in Edgewater, part of Miami. Florida. Messages about buying blow, you know, cocaine. In the early evening, he was watching football at a bar and she became upset when he res responded by saying, yes, Courtney, and a text message. Her responding with, yes, Courtney is unnecessary. I continue to have to explain to you how to act. Later that night, Courtney texts him saying, hopefully this will give you time to think about your actions and enjoy the hospital, which to me sounds just really vindictive and hateful. This was when the incident with the gashes on his face occurred. She goes on to text him saying, tell them your side, then I'll tell them what happened. Um, it gives me the chills reading stuff like this. He responds saying, I'm not saying anything. I'm gonna say a football incident. But there were additional texts also, referencing how she stabbed him numerous times. While he was in the hospital following an injury she inflicted, he texts her saying, I was in the hospital looking forward to seeing you and go drink and leave with someone. Uh, sorry. I was looking forward to seeing you and you go drink and leave with someone. When your boyfriend is passed out on the bed getting stitched up because I lost too much blood. Clenny sends him a series of sorry texts, though this occurs the day after. I love you so much, Christian. I should have been at the hospital with you and I should have slept next to you. I always have. 
I feel extreme regret, sadness, and humiliation, and I'm so sorry for hurting you. According to social work professor Denise Hines from GMU, men, particularly black men, are often hesitant to report physical violence by their female partners because they are afraid their abusers will instead blame them, result, resulting in their arrest. Um, resulting in their arrest. The text messages show how Clenny vacillates from angry outbursts to declarations of love. Um, Hines also talks about something referred to as a tr uh, to a traumatic bond, something which happens with a narcissist and a recurring pattern of abuse. There is this need for validation and love the pers from the person being abused. They need this love and that they're seeking it in the relationship, though this type of bonding happens in other types of relationships as well. Her declarations of love in particular are rewarding for him and reinforce to him the idea that she might change. Text messages from him in relation to her use of racial slurs against him. Your boyfriend is black and you're calling him that? Your boyfriend isn't dirt, why are you spitting on him? While texting her about injuries sustained, he says, My cheek, my eye, what might happen next time? I pray there is no next time like that. Her behavior, described as a clear pattern of being unhinged and out of control. She was a threat and has demonstrated a pattern of violence and, clearly, that fateful day, it came to an end. Courtney was charged with second-degree murder. Trial occurred December 19th. She was extradited from Hawaii to Florida and denied bond. Her Insta had more than 2 million subs. Her only fans had been deactivated. She was arrested August 10th in Hawaii where it was reported she sought PTSD treatment from the stabbing and her substance use concerns. Clenny is claiming self-defense. She claims Toby had been choking her on the ground when the incident occurred, which is not consistent with the facts. Clenny disclosed to investigators that she was 10 feet away when she hurled the knife at Toby after he had pushed her. This contradicts the medical examiner's findings, which indicate the knife wound went three inches deep and forceful pressure was involved in infliction of the injury. The autopsy indicating three inches at a downward angle. Authorities assert no bruises consistent with being strangled were found on the victim, nor did Clenny mention uh, Christian owning any type of weapon in their home. If anything, authorities seem to see a pattern of him being abused by her. According to Clenny's lawyer, she told them she and Toby had broken up and he was stalking her that this justified murder in self-defense. Ballsy. That she had a right to defend herself, but feels awful. She just sounds like a lying piece of crap. Her family refutes claims, his family refutes claims that he was abusive towards his partner. They assert that she was abusing Toby. His family plans to file a wrongful death lawsuit against Clenny, as they should. Clenny's lawyers express concern her OnlyFans materials might be used as evidence or as being relevant to the case, which might re just result in prejudice against the defense, arguing that Courtney Clenny should be judged by the admissible evidence, subject to judicial scrutiny, and not her lifestyle choices. Anyways, that's all I have on the case. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I just thought it would be good to cover a case where the victim was male and the attacker was female because I think we often cover cases, not just me, but true crime in general, where it's the female's the victim and it's perpetrated by a male. So that's not always the case. Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching and good night, Moonies.